Ha! Okay. <laughs> I guess we're filming. <laughs> There's no, oh, I haven't turned this thing on either. Uh, this, is, this is social psychology class. Love social psychology class. And oddly enough, and I hardly ever read about psychology because it's so boring. It is, it's boring. But I read this over the, the, uh, the holidays. It's called The Undoing Project by Michael Lewis. This is the guy that wrote Moneyball. Um, and he was writing about two psychologists who, one of them won the Nobel Prize in economics. And he's a psychologist. What's that all about? I mean, why would a psychologist win the Nobel Prize in, in economics? But he did. Um, and it was a collaboration between he and another individual that had since died uh, but he won the Nobel Prize in economics because he predicted how people would react to things. Uh, and that's really what social, social psychology is all about. You know, maybe I ought to figure out where I'm shooting this thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good enough, I guess. Anyway, that's, uh, uh, the guy's name was, uh, one, of, one of the individual's names was Amos uh, Tedeschi, and the other guy's name was Daniel Kahneman. Uh, and we're going to read about Kahneman and Tversky in, in the, the psych book, in the social psych book, because these guys uh, ask questions that nobody else asked. And because of that, uh, one of them won the Nobel Prize, and they were, they were both these highly touted individuals. Uh, really an interesting pair. One of them was, they were both Jewish. Uh, one of them was uh, from Israel, and the other guy was from Germany. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, the other guy was from Germany, and he uh, immigrated to, uh, to Israel. And, of course, if you know anything about Israel, uh, the uh, Jewish people that came out of Europe after World War II, they had one type of personality. A lot of these individuals, of course, had been in the concentration camps, had survived the Nazi concentration camps, and uh, they had a different personality from the people that were actually there. Uh, so when the war started, uh, there was a war of liberation, the British pulled out, and uh, it was, at that time it was Palestine. The British pulled out, and they didn't know what was going to happen next. Uh, the Arabs were, were threatening to just walk all over the Jewish people and annihilate them all. Uh, but of course, uh, that obviously didn't happen. Uh, the Israelis were able to uh, fight off all the uh, Arab states that were around them, Egypt and Jordan, uh, Syria, Iraq. Uh, all of these, uh, these countries banded together trying to destroy this tiny little place. Lebanon was another one. Uh, this tiny little place uh, that became Israel. And they, they fought to the death because that's what would have happened if they had lost. Uh, and both these individuals were, were soldiers in the, in the first uh, armies of, of Israel. And uh, they realized that there were a lot of people that were... <clears throat> Academia has a problem. Academia follows the lines, it, uh, it's very traditional. And they realized, well, uh, we're not gonna ever solve any problems unless we ask quest the questions we need to ask. And they did, they asked uh, the questions they needed to ask. And uh, they changed the whole tenor of, uh, of, of psychology. Uh, social psychology started before World War II, but it was Tversky and Kahneman uh, that started asking the really, really tough questions. Um, a lot of uh, psychology was was steeped in um, <clears throat> it was steeped in tradition. It was steeped in culture. Uh, so if you're from France, you ask one set of questions, and Germans asked another set of questions. And of course, we're Americans, so we ask American questions, which are different from Canadian questions, as bizarre as that may seem. Anyway, so Tversky and Kahneman, uh, they are the face of the new uh, social psychology. And about half of your textbook has to do with uh, research or questions that those guys ask. Really fascinating. <clears throat> some, of the questions, some of the questions were a little odd. Some of the questions don't seem like questions at all. I've got one for you right here. I think if I can put my glasses on just a second. Okay, this is one of the questions. Uh, imagine that the United States is preparing for the outbreak of an, an unusual Asian disease which is expected to kill 600 people. Did you guys hear that uh, 20 babies have died from the flu? Yeah, this flu season? We haven't seen this before. We're, well, not for a long time anyway. Anyway, okay, so there, uh, it's an unusual Asian disease which is expected to kill 600 people. 
there are two, two alternative programs to combat the disease uh, that have been proposed. Uh, assume that the exact scientific estimate of the consequence of the programs is as follows. If we follow program A, then uh, if it is adopted, then 200 of those, those 600 people will be saved. Uh, that's, that's program A. Program B, if we adopt this, there is a one-third possibility that 600 people will be saved. In, in other words, nobody will die. Uh, there's a two-thirds possibility that uh, no people will be saved. So which one do you pick? Do you pick A or B? A is uh, you save 200 people, and the second one is that you either, you have one-third uh, of a chance to save everybody and two-thirds of a chance to save nobody. So that's the question. So what I want you to do, and I apologize, this is where I used to teach Ashford. Go ahead and write down A or B. Make your selection. I have a few of the papers, and I don't. <laughs> I'm short one piece of paper. So you're going to have to rip out a piece, piece of paper for me. And I won't know which one it is because, you know, yours is... Your paper is the same? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so make your decision, A or B. A, you save 200 people. B, you have a one-third possibility of saving everybody and a two-thirds possibility of saving nobody. So that's your choice, A or B. You have to make a choice. Everybody, we have to make choices. The government does this all the time. They have statisticians that figure these things out, A or B. 200 for sure, or shoot the lottery. <clears throat> it's not a bad lottery, though. There's only three people in it. So you have a one-third chance of being a billionaire. A or B? Okay, I got a B, I've got a B, I got an A, I've got what do I have? I have a B, this is an A, and the last one is an A. Okay, so third it's a it's 50-50. I have I have three A's and three B's. Okay, so uh, I need a representative from the A's. Why did you pick A? Any, anybody, it doesn't matter, as long as you pick it. Any representative? Why did you pick A? Why'd you pick A, Edison? Well, I guess it depends on the scenario. Um, there's a, actually a really good show that I've seen last night, kind of, um, it depicts the, um, the conjoined, I think that's how they would say it, the conjoined twins. Conjoined twins, sir. Yeah, where they were able to be combined and stuff like that. Right. However, um, one of the young ladies was basically having heart murmurs and heart problems and stuff like that. The other twin was basically having problems with the blood flow in the brain. Right. So um, it kind of gave a chance as to where they both knew that they were both 50-50, but right. one of them uh, basically had made a decision on uh, what was the priority in their lives as to how they foreseen the future. Right. Uh, and they basically kind of uh, gave themselves up uh, to give life to the other sister. Um, did both of them survive? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, one of them did survive. She, she actually uh, sacrificed herself to give up her heart for her sister so she could be able to live. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what I meant. It, it, I guess you would say it depends on the case scenario. Okay. Uh, the different importance that are there and, and stuff like that. I mean, right. That's kind of somewhat how I would view it. So you picked A because you wanted, at least you wanted somebody to be saved. Yeah. You definitely wanted yeah. one third of the people to be saved. Okay. So how about a representative from B? Why did you pick B? There are no wrong answers in this one. Why did you pick B? Why did you go for the lottery? All or nothing. Is that the way the lottery works? 
Oh, you almost won. Here's here's ten thousand dollars. That's not the way it works. There was just one guy that won the what? It was it six hundred forty-seven million? So he took the the payout, the automatic payout, and got two two hundred and seventy-six million or something. That's the way the lottery works. Why did you pick B? Anybody doesn't matter. Volunteer. You better. You better volunteer because I'll pick you. <laughs> Anybody? Why did you pick B? Why did you go for all or nothing? Did you pick B? Yeah. Why, why decimate a whole race? Like, why eliminate you know, a whole population when you can? It's only 600 people. There was only 600 people in a tribe, and the United States decided to kill them all. Well, they did, yeah. They usually, yeah, they, they just swept right through. Actually, I was just reading um, a book called uh, The Apache Wars. And then I w read a book about uh, the Comanches. And uh, you're right, sometimes they just went in and killed everybody. Uh, and usually it was not the people that they, <laughs> they wanted to kill. They just found Indians, and they started killing them. That's what happened with the Cheyenne up in Washita, the Washita River Massacre. Anyway, okay. Yeah, so you're going to go all or nothing? That's, that's your choice. One third of a chance that, you, that nobody dies. It's kind of like the flu shot every year. You know, we come up with a flu shot. Flu shot uh, is based on what, what we saw last year. Uh, of course, the flu changes every year. We get, it, we, we get our, the flu out of Asia. It always comes out of Asia. Uh, the Asians live with their pigs. <clears throat> so, they, yeah. so they process all these diseases every year. And we get a brand new flu every year because, well, they live with their pigs. Uh, one of the reasons that it was so devastating for Europeans to come over here uh, during the, the European incursion after Columbus, the reason it was so devastating was because Europeans live with their pigs. And pigs have a very similar immune system to, system to humans. So humans will give their diseases to the pigs. Well, it doesn't kill the pigs, but it use the, uses the pigs as a secondary host. So then it, it mutates inside the pig, and now all of a sudden we've got a new disease. And that's exactly what happened with all those god-awful diseases, smallpox, chickenpox, measles. All these viruses came out of the, the pigs of Europe. And as sad as all that is, I don't remember why I'm talking about all this. Oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, okay, so Tavesky and Kahneman, two really brilliant individuals, um, they, uh, they're the ones that have come up with all these new questions, uh, new ways of looking at things. This is, the, this is an unofficial syllabus because it hasn't been signed by my boss, and I don't have a boss. So this is going to get confusing. I'm going to have to go to the provost to get it signed. So yes, this is an unofficial copy. It, does, it only has my signature on it. Uh, if she signs it, it doesn't change anything, then I will bring you the back page and you can tear up the old back page and put in the new back page. So how are we going to run this class is the question. Uh, I'm just here for a good time. I tell you guys that every semester. I'm just here to have fun. Uh, and of course, me talking is a lot of fun. Evidently, it's a lot of fun for me. So how are you going to pass the class? Well, there's, there's uh, three, three tests. Uh, after chapter 4, chapter 8, and chapter 13, you will take a test. And that will be your final. They're all online, uh, 75 questions. Uh, there is a library paper that has to do with something in your, in your social psychology text. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, answer discussion questions. Uh, there are discussion questions, uh, and they're similar to what I just talked about. <laughs> the uh, question I just asked you. So uh, I'm just going to ask you how you feel about these things. Um, since I just read Tavesky and, and Kahneman, or since I just read about Tavesky and Kahneman, it probably, well, I don't know, maybe it will be a uh, Tavesky uh, Kahneman question. The other thing about social psychology, and if you've had a class with Sarah, uh, or if you have a class with Dr. Wolf this semester, uh, one of the things, one of the aspects of psychology is research. 
Uh, if we don't do research, we don't know anything, and uh, nothing can change unless, unless we do more research. So what I want you guys to do is to go online and uh, find a research project uh, every, every week. Now, what in the world am I talking about? Let me see what's here. You go to, oh my goodness gracious, there's a gap there. <clears throat> research participation, next to the last page. There's a website there, www.socialpsychology.org slash expts dot htm <coughs> number p-o-t-e-e-e-r t-h-e-r if you go to that website <clears throat> uh, if you go to that website then there's a whole list of, of uh, research and what you'll do is click on one of them um, uh, and then you give me this information the title of, and the name of the researcher and the researcher's affiliation they'll tell you what uh, university they come from or where they come from uh, did the title of the study match the direction of the, uh, of, of the, of the inquiry? Uh, there's a lot of research that they say, this is, about, this is about sex, and then it turns out it's about, you know, horses or something, or dogs or whatever. You know, sometimes they, they lie, but that's part of it. <laughs> Society lies to us all the time. If we watch a, car a cartoon, if we watch an advertisement on television, are they telling us the truth? Does Pepsi Cola really make us look like Britney Spears? <laughs> yes, it really does. Does Mountain Dew make you do flips in the snow or something? <clears throat> anyway. Uh, anyway, so there's a lot of things that uh, people lie to us all the time. They do. We put on clothes, you know, this isn't the way I look. I had on sweatpants yesterday, an old sweatshirt, grungy shoes. That's the real me. This isn't the real me. This is the me I put on to teach. And I teach better with a tie on, as odd as that seems. Uh, I used to work in a hospital, and uh, if I didn't wear my tie, most people wear scrubs in the hospital, but I always wore a, a, a tie, a shirt and tie with my lab coat on, I looked like a doctor. And I was really good at my job. Maybe it was because of the way I looked, I don't know. If you feel one way, maybe you'll act that way. If you feel grungy, maybe you act grungy. If you feel all dressed up, maybe you can actually sound like you know what the hell you're talking about. <clears throat> I just made that up. <laughs> it could be true. <laughs> Briefly discuss the research in, uh, in the context of the topic. And, and you get 10 points for that. So all you have to do is click on them. Some of them are really short. Some of them are just, take, will take you forever. But uh, there, it's, it's research, and you're actually helping other social psychologists uh, do their research. So that's one of the things I want you to do. Every week, just go in there and, and find something that looks fun, okay? Something that's really fun. Uh, and there, there's a list. I mean, it's, it's really, really long. So there's just a ton of research in there. Uh, just try it out and see what happens. And then there's an online posting every week. And that's it. That's, that's all there is. Okay? Uh, so you'll do, you'll do the uh, discussion question. Um, and uh, the reality is, no matter what you say in the discussion question, I will accept it. That's not the reason that I give you a discussion question isn't so you get the right answer. It's so that you think. I'm trying to make you think, okay? So that's why I ask you these questions. The other thing is that this is a tribal college, and uh, you need, I, I want you to understand your own culture, okay? So I, I may ask you a question that asks you about your, your culture. And that's very important. It's important that you know your culture because when you become a psychologist, uh, all of the textbooks, well, I don't even have, oh, all the textbooks, uh, this is all, this is all mostly white culture. And it's mostly European culture. Uh, it's Western culture, okay? Uh, and you guys have a different culture than they do. And so m maybe they're wrong. Or maybe they're, maybe the whole world is like that. That's not kidding. No, the Chinese are completely different. And there's a lot more of them than there are Americans. There's only 350 million Americans, and there's like a billion, 1.3 billion Chinese. So maybe they're right and Western people are wrong. 
Uh, okay. <clears throat> and this is something that I read over the holidays. Um, uh, okay, so when the Spanish came in, of course they came up, they came, they uh, conquered in, the, in South America and then Central America and then they came up into the Americas. So when you guys first had contact with the Spanish, how did they treat you? Sweet? They're the one that came up with the name Navajo. Actually, it's a Hopi means one thing, but the Spanish go, oh, it means thief. Uh, yeah, they were pretty, pretty mean people. Um, they're completely different, right? So when Americans first started coming over, did they treat you differently? Americans and English, whatever, whoever, no, they were Americans. By that time, they were the United States. Did they treat you differently? No? Treated you the same? Made you into slaves? See what happened? That's what the Spanish were doing. The uh, raiding tribes, and we won't talk about who they were, but the raiding tribes were wandering around. You guys weren't raiders. Uh, you're fairly sedentary, but uh, the raiding tribes would come in and kidnap people and take them down to Mexico and sell them for slaves. And, uh, isn't that horrible? Who are these people? Doing all this horrible stuff. <laughs> uh, why didn't yeah, this is yeah, and this is a question I have to ask uh, Marius. Um, why didn't uh, they make slaves out of the indigenous people? Why didn't all those Southerners are trying to pick cotton and grow sugar and rice and whatnot? So they brought Africans over, right, as slaves. So why didn't they just? make slaves out of the indigenous people. Why did they? Why didn't they? Uh, they didn't. We, we were not easily to handle. I mean, we, we could escape and go back to other tribes. The Spanish did it? Why couldn't the English do it? It's new to them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. Maybe Maurice has the answer. I know, it's a little strange, isn't it? The Spanish did it, not only that, 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 but they had a whole economy based on kidnapping people and selling them down in Mexico as slaves. But the Americans didn't do that. I, I don't know. <clears throat> Something to think about. I know, history, history just drives you crazy. Why did one thing happen and not another thing happen? Okay, I should have said this. Okay, if I turn that off. Uh, this is online too, this class is also online. Uh, if you get tired of listening to me talk about whatever I'm talking about, then possibly you can uh, just watch it on television. I mean on your computer, because I'll be taping everything. I'm taping, I'm ta taping me trying to remember how to turn this. <laughs> oh my God, I can't remember. Uh, let's see, how does this work? I can't remember. Well, let me tell you the story of, uh, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. Uh, she wasn't treated very nice by her uh, stepmother. Uh, she had two evil stepsisters. You may remember this story. You may have heard this story before. Okay. Um, she would she couldn't go out to a party. I know. They made her clean the house. This is an ugly story. Um, anyway, so she wasn't able to do any of that stuff. And uh, so one day, they, there was this big ball. <clears throat> and she didn't get to go, of course. Didn't have a dress. She's all dirty. Uh, so everybody else went to the ball. The stepmother, stepsisters. And then her fairy godmother came down and poof made her into, you know, did, did all of her makeup, did her hair, put a n nice new dress on her, got her, some tr got her an, uh, a ride. So she <laughs> goes to the ball and uh, she meets the, the prince and the prince falls in love with her. Of course he does. Uh, but on her way out the door, uh, she had to leave by midnight who leaves a party at midnight, right? <laughs> <laughs> she had to leave at midnight, and so what happened next? Oh, she lost her shoe. 
you lost your shoe. Uh, oh, um, we have a new social work uh, instructor. She's from my hometown. I know. I hired her. Do you think it's a family thing? Nepotism. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, I, I uh, went over there to, uh, to help her set things up uh, on Sunday. She's got five and a half, size five and a half feet. Five and a half. It's like her feet are like this big. How in the world does she ever walk on those things? How do you stay? It's like walking on high heels all the time. I, my, my feet are huge. <clears throat> anyway, why, why was I talking? Okay, okay, so she loses her shoe. Um, and so the, the prince decides he's going to find her by, by putting that shoe on people. You've heard this story before, right? Yeah, okay. So he checks everybody in the, in the, neighbor, in the, uh, in the kingdom. Uh, so what do you think happened next? He found three women whose feet fit the shoe. And two of them were just drop-dead gorgeous. And then there was, you know, our hero, our heroine. I guess we don't use that word anymore. Uh, you know, I think I'm supposed to have Adapter to that. Yeah, there is an adapter, and I yeah, it used to be on here. I've got one downstairs. I'll have to go down and get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. So guess what happened next? Yeah, the truth. There's three of them, and one of them's like this scuzzy lady with you know bad, ugly clothes and dirty face, and her <coughs> hair's all messed up. She hasn't washed it in a couple of weeks. The other two are drop dead gorgeous. Guess what he does? Which one does he pick? Which one would you pick? The one with black hair, the one with red hair, or the, the one with dirty, grungy hair? Who are you going to pick? Who are you going to pick? <laughs> Think about that for a second. I'm going to go down and get my adapter. <laughs> I'll be right back. So what criteria do we use to select a mate? Is we there a look, good basketball player? We look for somebody who's healthy, or well, consciously healthy, 
good looking? Good looking? It's looking okay. Okay. <laughs> Does looking have something to do with healthy? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Okay, if they're athletic, that has something to do with healthy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so what criteria do you use? This is a prince. What is he looking for? He's looking for a princess. Wait a minute, we just had a prince pick a princess over the holidays, didn't we? Oh, Meghan Markle. She's mixed race. I know. Oh, my God. Really, England? We're going to have a mixed race princess? Oh, my God. What does that mean? I don't know. And she's not air, 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 air. aristocratic? Yes. I agree. And she's American, the only one she's that went American? in. She's American. Oh, my God. But she's That's happened. She's American. Yeah, well, it's Simpson. <coughs> Happened before, yeah, seems and she was married before. Yeah, she she's divorced. divorced? Yeah, oh my God. and he's still alive. <laughs> he's still alive. That's a tragedy. <laughs> wow. Although how they trashed Wall Simpson, they said all her husbands are still alive. Uh, I'm an ex-husband, <laughs> and I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how. <laughs> I have an ex-wife, and she's still alive, so it's a good thing I'm not an aristocrat. Yeah. Actually, as a man, you'd probably be celebrated. She would be you know, known as trash. She's an American. She's had sex with somebody else. Yeah. I'm shocked. Okay, uh, so when we select a mate, how do we do it? Luck? Smell. Has something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> After all the mistakes I made, uh, yeah, luck has something to do with it. Can you guys see that okay? Crystal. Crystal? So how, how did you pick a mate? Uh, those of you who were married. Mm, I say parents. Yeah. Oh, so it was an arranged marriage. Kind of like that was the place right there, and that was that was it. It was just she was there, and I was there. That's Proximity. How, that's how it began. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Uh, very frequently you marry somebody that you work with. That's what happened. Okay, there you go. I married my boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those of you who, who have been in class with me, you know that I married, I was an enlisted and she was an officer. That's against, that's against military <laughs> regulations. Not just Air Force regulations, it's against all military regulations. Officers are like uh, better, different. So we broke the law. We had to break the law in order to get married. Why is it that my, my computer's not even turning on? What's going on? I don't know. Does it know it's, it's in Arizona yet? <laughs> <laughs> Always figured that out. It knows what time it is here. So how did you pick your mate? You want to know how my wife picked me? Yeah. Uh, I was a smart ass. Can I say that? I was a smart ass and she liked that because most enlisted people just treated her like she was a goddess or something. But I did. I treated her. I was in charge of the lab. <laughs> I thought I was hot stuff. <laughs> And uh, then she saw me play softball. It was all over with after that. I know. 
if she was there, I'll tell you what, I did. I hit a home run every time I came up. You think I'm <laughs> this is softball. This is softball. Okay? It's easy to hit. And I'm a little bitty guy, and I'm just cranking the ball over the fence. And all these big guys are hitting pop-ups, you know, and I'm just driving the ball. Anyway, so she picked me off a softball field. <clears throat> and she talks about that in obscene ways, and I won't tell you how. What that's all about. Okay, this is social psychology. All right, let me show you what these three ladies uh, Let me show you what these, these three ladies look like. Come on. There you go. Okay. Right, there they are. All right. There you go. There's the, the three ladies. Which one would you pick? Should I hand out the pieces of paper again? <laughs> A, B, or C? B. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with B, too. <laughs> a, B, or C? Um, B. B? B. B? B. B? A. A? Come on, Edison. <laughs> Make a choice. This is what happens if you delay making a choice as far as marriage is concerned. There's somebody else out there who's a little bit more aggressive than you are. And guess who she marries? Listen, women like aggressive men sometimes. <laughs> You're going to be SOL. L stands for luck. <laughs> what do you think? A, B, or C? B. B. Okay. Well, of course, B. B's gorgeous. She's drop dead gorgeous. Uh, I'm, I was thinking of leaving my wife if I knew who she was. But she was okay. <laughs> Just before he was about to choose one of the dark-haired women, the young lady's fairy godmother performed a miracle, and she turned into the woman the prince had fallen in love with at the ball. Really? Yeah. Not only did she look like a dreamboat, but she began walking and talking with more self-assurance. She changed her behavior because of the way she looked. Does that make sense? Yeah, it really does. It's the way we are. So when I wear these clothes, I can talk. When I wear my scuzz clothes, I can barely, I'm, I mumble a lot. <clears throat> the prince immediately chose her as his princess because she looked like this. And she was prettier than the other two. That's true. She, you don't think she's prettier than, yeah. than the other two? Uh, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, the fairy godmother, of course, was a bit of a trickster, and just as the prince was saying his final I do's, the fairy godmother changed the young lady back into what she, she looked like before the miraculous transformation. What a joker she was. The fairy godmother then cussed the prince out. You know how fairy godmothers are. They're not afraid <coughs> of anything. Uh, she cussed him out for being superficial and not recognizing her from, from her inner beauty instead of her outward appearance. That's what, the, uh, that's what the fairy godmother said. However, the prince had a rebuttal. He said she acted differently when she was dressed up. She acted differently when she had makeup on. <clears throat> I dated a woman once, and this was a really long time ago, so <laughs> I've been married for 40 years, <laughs> almost 40 years. Anyway, I dated a woman once who would not let you see her if she didn't have her eye makeup on because her, her eyes were her best feature. She would come to the door with nothing, well, she'd come to the door with not very many clothes on as long as she had her eyes made up. <laughs> but she could be dressed up in all the clothes in the world and if she didn't have her eyes make, made up, she wouldn't answer the door. As strange as that sounds. I know, that seems kind of odd. Her eyes were the most important thing to her. And if she didn't have her, her, I don't know. I don't know what she looked like without her eye makeup on. I have no idea. No, no idea whatsoever. Even when she swam, she, wouldn't, she would swim with her head over the top, above the water, so she didn't mess up her mascara or something. I don't know. It seemed kind of silly to me. But I'm not real bright, so I didn't understand it at all. I never married the lady. 
I don't think she would have married me anyway. But uh, anyway. <clears throat> Jean-Paul Sartre was a French philosopher who stated that we cannot be distinguished from our situations for they form us and decide our possibilities. The you that you are here is not the same you that you are in Phoenix or the same you that you are in Gallup or the same you that you are in Albuquerque. You act differently. We all do. We act differently in different situations. If you go down, if you go to a sit-down restaurant in uh, in uh, Gallup, <laughs> yeah, sure, they have Cracker Barrel. Okay, you go to, or you go to McDonald's. Do you act differently? If you go to a taco place, uh, Taco Del Taco in Gallup, and you go to McDonald's, do you act differently? Because they're different types of places. Is that is that true, or are you the same person no matter who you are? Are you the same person on the res that you are off the res? Are you the same person around people that look like you than people that don't look like you? If you go down, if you go down to Phoenix, most of the people are white, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I think. I don't know. Last time I was there, it seemed that way. Uh, but here, if you go down to Chinle, you go to Bosch's. Hardly any white people at all, if there are any in the store. Well, anytime I'm there, there's one in the store. Okay, so do you act differently in this environment than you do than you do in that environment? I don't think so. If you are from the northern plains and you go back home and you're wandering around Browning, do you act differently than you do down here? Yeah, you do. Probably. I would imagine. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to brag just a little bit. It's not very much. <laughs> when I was in high school, I was a pretty good athlete, but I was only a good athlete for two years. Uh, I was really small, okay? I was really tiny. Uh, and then I started growing uh, when I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, so by the time I was a junior, I was, I was huge. I was gigantic, like, like I was. <laughs> Anyway, I was a pretty good athlete because I had been training as a little bitty shrimp and as soon as I grew like a foot, all of a sudden my legs were longer and I could run a lot faster than I did before. So um, on uh, February 1st, I'm going to be inducted into my high school athletic hall of fame. Why did I tell you that? There was a reason. I had a reason why. Well, we probably won't have class. Um, I'll, I'll have, but I'll have to figure a way about getting home. So in Indiana, uh, of course, I've been in. The, I was in the military forever. I didn't tell you who I was. Well, most of you know who I was. You, you two guys are the only ones that haven't had class with me. Uh, I was in the military for like thirty. I was in for twelve years. My wife was in for twenty-four. So, but we spent about thirty years in the military, wandering all over the United States, all over the world, in essence. So, I've been a lot of different places. Uh, so, going home is different for me. Uh, most people don't travel as much as I have. Uh, most people haven't been shot at as much as I have. <laughs> people seem to shoot at me a lot or attack me with a knife. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. My my first wife, for example. Never shot me, but she stabbed me. Um, okay. Uh, so when I go home, uh, I have to decide how I'm going to act. I haven't been there since I was 17, really. So how I'm, this, that was 50 years ago. I, I did all this running 50 years ago. That's how old I am. Uh, so how will I act when, when, when I go back home? It's going to be interesting, isn't it? How should I act, Francis? Tell me, tell me. Uh, I don't know either. Like an explorer. Like an explorer. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you guys? <laughs> Talk yeah. funny. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I hired the lady that we hired, because she talks like I do. She's got the same accent that I do. Anyway. Did she say bashes too? Like they would say bosches. Bosches? <laughs> Uh, she's in Shiprock. Did they have a Bosch's? No, that's, no. that's something else. Okay. <clears throat> it's Bosch's, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody corrects me. I think people just laugh at me because of the way I say things. <laughs> Francis was in my first class, so he's been laughing at me for what? This is 
four semesters now. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. This is Fiorina and Todd. They have been happily married for three years. Uh, last Thursday, Fiorina uh, got a really mean tone in her voice and shrew shrewishly said to Todd, can't you ever put the cat back on the toothpaste? And those of you who live with somebody else, sometimes they don't put the, tap, the cat back on the toothpaste, and then you squeeze it out, and the, the part that was right next to the, the opening is all dried out, so you get this lump of toothpaste. Has that ever happened to you? Never? You're lucky. You're so lucky. My, my wife won't squeeze the toothpaste tube, so she squeezes it from the bottom. <laughs> no. She's got all this toothpaste up in the tube and she's squeezing it from the bottom. Anyway, from the top. Uh, anyway, so a lot of people, this irritates a lot of people, how you, how you do your, your toothpaste. Todd assumed that Fiorina must have had a bad drive home from work. The, the, the problem was external. It wasn't an internal problem. She's not always as true. She's not always this way. He figured it must be something external instead of internal. However, we have another couple. This is Fitch and Bodie. Uh, they, they fought before they were married and, and had uh, been unhappily sparring uh, through the three years of marriage. Uh, they fight all the time. Uh, one day Fitch said to Bodie, can't you ever put the top back on the toothpaste? Uh, Bodie thought to himself as he put the top back on the toothpaste, what is the word for someone who is unpleasant and always hostile? Oh yeah, Fitch. She's a real Fitch. <laughs> it's a <rhyme. laughs> uh, Later at dinner, Fitch asked Bodie if the dinner was okay. He blew up anticipating a fight because he assumed that uh, all of this negativity was internal rather than external. She's a real Fitch. Okay, so one guy, his wife gives him a hard time. He assumes that it was something has happened, something external has happened, and she's not really that this way. Uh, the other guy. He's been fighting with his wife for uh, three years or more, and uh, he assumes that everything is internal. So she really is an unpleasant person inside. That's what he assumes. And this is part of social psychology. Uh, when we drive down the road and somebody does something horrible, like passes us and then slows down. I hate to <clears throat> when I lived in Germany, when I lived in Ger Germans do this all the time. Germans are extremely competitive. So they want to be in front. So here we are driving down the road, and we're driving faster than we're supposed to, and the guy behind me, he, for one thing, they tailgate really a lot. So they, they literally get up on your tail, your, uh, your bumper. So we're, we're driving down the road, and we're driving faster than we should, and it's one of those windy mountain roads. So this guy passes me really fast. And so I slow down so that he can get in, and he gets in front of me, and so we're driving down the road, and I said, well, at least he's not behind me anymore. So what happens next? He slows down, and he turns. He got in front of me so that he could slow down and turn. Why didn't he just stay behind me, right? Who so does that? So the Germans are like the bastards. <laughs> uh, anyway. I love the Germans. They're really nice people. Their food is fabulous. They're, but they're really, really competitive people. Anyway, uh, so if this happens to you, what do you, say, what do you say to yourself? How do you rationalize this to yourself? You, you think say the serenity prayer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, that, it's at that moment that I've forgotten the serenity prayer. It's not going to work. I know. Fa fascinating stuff. Uh, so normally what you say is, well, this guy probably just had a bad day. Isn't that what you normally say to yourself? No, you probably say, what a jackass. This guy's a real bastard. Isn't that what you usually say to yourself along with other enough to run? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why in the world is, did he do that? Well, only an idiot would do that. That must be it. He's an idiot. That's it. Okay. So you assume it's internal rather than external, right? He's just a naturally evil person. <laughs> Course, this is the home of the Nazis. <coughs> Almost everybody's <coughs> negative in one way or another. Social psychology is a scientific study of how people think about influence and relate to one another. And so that's what we're really going to talk about in here. We're going to talk about how social psychology uh, looks at the individual and what the, how the individual is thinking. And that's, that's, our, that's our mission, 
in this class is to figure out what people are thinking. But the reality is, we have no clue unless we ask them a question. We ask them a question like I just asked you about, uh, about uh, uh, curing somebody. We have, a, we have two programs. One will save 200 people, and the other might save everybody, or it may save nobody. That's what we do with the flu shot every year. It might save a lot of people, or it may, might not help anybody. Uh, last year, it was what? 25%, 35%? 35% effective. It only worked on 35% of the people. Flu shots. I know. So getting a flu shot, how many people have had their flu shot? One, two, 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 two good people in, no, 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 no flu shot, <sighs> Edison, <sighs> I haven't had mine either. <laughs> so of everybody in this room, uh, the person that is the most likely to die from the flu is me because I'm so old. Old people die of the flu. They, their immune systems are weakened. The rest of you guys, I wouldn't even worry about it if I were you. Don't worry about it. You're, you're young. You're healthy. You're strong. Theoretically, I'm immunocompromised. Uh, not only that, but I don't have a spleen. And that's one of, the, one of the major aspects of your immune system. And I don't have one. It's gone. Lost it in a soccer game. To a brick goalie. I knew that guy. He was a friend of mine. <laughs> I knew him. And I know what a bastard he really was. I know, why would he do that? I was a friend of his. Why in the world does he rugby tackle me in a soccer game? Why would you do that? I'd already scored twice. He was the goal. Okay, not important. <clears throat> it is important. I don't have a spleen, okay? <laughs> I could die tomorrow afternoon of some strange disease. Social psychology was defined by Gordon Al Alport. Now, the interesting thing about Gordon Alport is that he had a brother who wrote the initial text of, uh, of social psychology. So you can say the Alport brothers are the two fathers of social psychology. Gordon Alport and his brother. And I can't think of what his brother's name was. Uh, thoughts are affected. I'm, going, I'm actually going to talk about his brother in just a second. Thoughts are affected by actual presence of others. Feelings are affected by imagined presence of others. Uh, behavior is affected by the, the implied presence of others. Uh, so as you're driving down the road, uh, why don't you drive 100 miles an hour? There's deer. Deer? Sheep. Sheep? Horses? Cows? Could be anything. But what if you can see? You know, you're headed to Window Rock and you go around that big corner. I mean, you can see for two or three miles. Why not just hit the gas? Why not fly? You know there's nothing between you and there. Why don't you drive 100 miles an hour? Because the roads are bad. I'm sorry? The roads are bad. Oh, no, the road, they just resurfaced that road right there. It's perfect. It's nice. Why don't we drive 100 miles an hour? Not Mine is. <laughs> Why don't I drive 100 miles an hour? Law enforcement. I'm sorry? Law enforcement. Ah. So I imagine the presence of others. They might may be there, and, and, and I just don't see them. We can, the cops can slow you down just by sitting there. They don't even have to arrest anybody. They just have to sit there. All you have to do is see them. And this is what happened when I was driving through Texas. Every three or four miles, there's another state cop. So I'm going to speed limit. Well, five miles over the speed limit. I figured they weren't picking me up since everybody else was passing me. <clears throat> so it's the presence of others, the imagined presence of others. Uh, so the first time uh, somebody, first time somebody offered you a, a can of beer, and you're only 12 years old, or 11, why didn't you drink it? Your parents aren't there. But were you worried that they'd find out? Yeah, they told you not to drink, and so that's the reason you didn't do it? 
I'm 68 years old and I'm still doing things that my parents told me not to do. I'm still not doing things that my parents told me not to do. They're both gone. I don't have to worry about my mother finding out what I'm doing. She's not here. She lived to be 98 years old. Probably if I did the wrong thing, she'd pop me in the back of the head, whatever ghost she happens to be. No, of course she's not going to do that. <laughs> Why would my mother care what I do? There's six of us. Can she follow all six of us around as a ghost? Can you do that as a ghost? I don't know. I don't know either. Okay, anyway, the imagined presence of others. So all of this takes, it has to do with uh, why we do what we do. <clears throat> and sometimes we don't do things because there's always a possibility that somebody will find out what you did. What's the difference between social psychology and sociology? This argument came up over the, over the holiday, unfortunately. Both fields are interested in social behavior, right? A social worker deals mostly in sociology. A psychologist deals mostly with individual thought, but it's still individual thought in, in, uh, uh, in a society. Uh, last semester, didn't the guy uh, break out the windows at, in Las Vegas and start shooting down into a concert. Who does that? Why? Wasn't it last semester that the guy took his military weapon into his church and tried to kill everybody in the church? That happened last semester. What's wrong with these two people? Why is this happening in our society? Last semester, we had a video of an individual, if you were in one of my class, well, Francis was in my class last semester. Uh, the guy at, the, at Charlottesville uh, pulled out his weapon, pulled the trigger, it wouldn't fire, so he cocked it and fired into a group of Antifa, a term I'd never heard before, anti-fascists. Anti shot into a group that he didn't like. Just shot into a group that he didn't like. Miraculously, he didn't hit anybody but he just shot into a group of people. At the same rally, a guy drove his car into a group of individuals. Most people went over his hood and they survived. <coughs> the lady that he came <coughs> under his bumper, he, uh, he uh, caught her under the bumper, she's the one that died. Who does this kind of thing? Purposefully runs into people. And this is something that we need to think about. A guy went into a Walmart in uh, just north of, of Denver, uh, pulled out his gun and started shooting at people. He killed six people. Who does that? Well, that's one of the questions that we need to answer. That's one of the, we need, we need answers to this. We need to figure out what the hell's going on. If you put a, a gun in the hand of a child, what will they do? Pull the trigger, of course. What else do you do with a gun? Pull the trigger, right? So if we put the, a gun in the hand of an adult, what does he do? Well, if he's military trained, he doesn't pull the trigger. Because <laughs> he knows, he knows what, what kind of damage that could do. Uh, the curious thing was that the second guy that went into the church was trained by the Air Force. And the Air Force kicked him out because of mental illness. And here he does all these things. So why didn't the Air Force tell everybody that this guy was a danger? That's the question we're still trying to answer. People will lose their jobs because the Air Force didn't say anything. But any, anyway, this is a question that we all have to answer. Uh, over the weekend, I don't know if you heard about it, but uh, Hawaii was told that they had a, uh, <laughs> there was a missile headed toward the island. Yeah. Whoa, I know. What do you do if you find that out? I was watching a movie last night, Deep Impact, about meteors coming into the, the Earth. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So what do you do? What do you do if you've got two hours to live? What do you do next? Steal things? No, wait a minute. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, and that's a question that we ask. Psychology focuses on individual level, uh, level variables. What's the thought process taking place? Of course, this is what we want to know about the guy that's, that's blasting away at the concert with his bump, his uh, automatic weapons, but they weren't really automatic. 
Emotional reactions, what was he thinking, what, what was he feeling? Uh, we tried to figure out who he was and what, what this was all about. Isn't that what we did? We're trying to figure out what he's thinking. We talked to his girlfriend. He sent his girlfriend, he gave his girlfriend $100,000 to go back home to the Philippines. Uh, he sent her money so that she could buy a house for her family in the Philippines. What's going on with this guy? We don't know. It sounds like a really sweet fella. He gave her, what, $200,000 to set her, her up in, in the Philippines. Was he going to join her? That's what she thought. So what's going on emotionally with this individual? Why was he so pissed off at these people at the concert that he decided, decided to drop uh, rounds in on top of them? And that's what he was doing. He wasn't really aiming. He was just pulling the trigger, and it was firing you know, 15 or 20 times or whatever into a group of individuals. Wasn't aiming at their heads, wasn't trying to do kill, kill shots. Uh, maybe the, uh, he was kind of far away, so possibly the, the, the rounds were actually dropping after he shot them. So if he had tried to aim at those people, he probably would have missed. Or if he was aiming at their head, he probably would have hit them in the chest, or in the leg, or whatever. So he wasn't really aiming, but he was killing people. And he killed, what, 59 people? He shot for a really long time. So what were what were what was he thinking? What, what was he, how what was he feeling? Uh, behavioral tendencies, and of course his behavioral tendencies. Now we know this guy uh, dressed up in uh, uh, sweatpants and flip flops and wandered around and gambled. Sometimes a million dollars a night, he would gamble. <clears throat> That's his behavior. He wouldn't interact with anybody. He wouldn't drink. The only time he drank was after he played then he would drink. But he would never get drunk. Wow. I know. So th these are things that we, we need, these are questions that we need to ask. It's going to happen again. Maybe not the 59 people. Uh, they're the uh, guy from Bangladesh. I don't know, this happened over the holidays as well. He strapped uh, an explosive device around his waist, went into Times Square and exploded the, the device. It was so poorly made. <laughs> he didn't even kill himself. That's not funny. I'm sorry. He hurt two people. He hurt two people. But he could have. I mean, it could have been a, a highly explosive device. Uh, it's going to happen again. And we need to understand who they are. We need to be able to recognize these people before it happens so that we can stop it from happening. So that we can ask them questions and maybe make them feel better. If you've ever been around somebody that committed suicide, Sometimes all you need to do is say hello, and it stops it. Of course, you never know if people don't commit suicide. You only know how they have committed suicide. I know, it's kind of bizarre. <clears throat> Sociology focuses on uh, group level variables, uh, the status of the individual. We talk about that, the norms, uh, what's the norm of the, of the area, and what are the social roles that people, uh, that people have. The sociology, uh, psych psychology looks at the individual and what's going on in their brain what they're thinking. Sometimes what everyone knows is pretty accurate, and sometimes it isn't. And that's what this, this book is about. Common knowledge. We have this ability to think, well, you know, I, I knew that. I could have done that. But the reality is we don't think about these things. Common knowledge is not common. It's usually knowledge after the fact. I would have done that. Sure you would. Um, of course, that's, that's what I was reading about over the holidays. I was reading about the Apache Wars, I was reading about the Comanche. Uh, sometimes they treated them very badly and they, they retaliated. And then they went, oh my God, why are you doing what you're doing? Well, looking back, you, it's easy to say, well, if you hadn't done what you, if you had fed them uh, what you told them that you're going to feed them, if you had given them the money that you told them that you're going to give them, then they wouldn't have done what they did. It's easy to do that, <clears throat> but it's difficult when, uh, before the fact. It's easy after the fact, as strange as that sounds. Uh, so sometimes common knowledge is, not, is really not that common. You really can't tell the difference uh, relying only on common sense. 
Uh, social psychologists use science to find the most reliable rules about human thought, emotion, and behavior. And really, that's what we're doing. We're looking for rules and laws. Uh, I, I was born in 1949. I grew up in the 50s and 60s. Uh, we not only we <laughs> we not only didn't have computers, but we also only had three te uh, stations: ABC, NBC, and CBS, and sometimes a PBS station, a local station. That's four. So you had four choices every night, anytime you're watching television. How many choices do you guys have? Five, seven, twelve, thirteen. No television. Hundreds. Hundreds. As many as you want. You can do Netflix and watch whatever you want. You can binge watch. Um, I know. If you guys want to watch a television, a, a movie that you haven't seen yet, you can find it on the computer and just watch it on the computer, can't you? Yeah. It's cool. So you, you can watch anything that you want. You don't have to wait for it to come to onto the television. You can watch it on your telephone. Oh, I forgot my son. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my son. Oh, my stupid or why? Oh, I hope nobody calls me. I know. It's at home, sitting on my table. I keep forgetting my cell phone. Do you guys, do you, do you have a cell phone? You have a cell phone. Yeah. There's a cell phone. you have a cell phone? It's in your bag? Cell phone? Right there. Oh, that's right. You just got a call. Cell phone? You got a cell phone. Yeah, there you go. Just to make sure. Do you ever forget it? No. Never. Never, never. The puppies in the, the young ones in the class, they never forget their cell phone. It's part of you, isn't it? It's the first thing that you think about. Well, you don't even have to think about it. It's just automatic. You put it in your pocket. And I have to think about it in order to just remember my cell phone. I forgot it. I don't have it. Sorry, <clears throat> not important. That's how I will cut the door. Is that right? You check everything? Have I got my keys? Well, of course, you're not going to be able to drive any place without your keys. I can't lock the, the door without my keys. I thought I forgot my drink. I went back to get my drink. It was in my office. I just overlooked it. I know. Okay. Isn't this weird? So the, uh, the world is changing. It's not, it's not going to be the same in the future as it is today. I was at Walmart on Sunday in Farmington. I never go to Farmington. But I had to go to Shiprock, so I just went over to Farmington. Farmington's like 30 miles from Shiprock. I thought it was right next door. It took me half an hour to get there. Maybe I should have driven faster. It's like 23 miles. It's 28, 29 miles, and Walmart is inside. And you have to go up the hill and down the hill. Anyway, I went to Walmart. Everybody's got earbuds in. Everybody. The people that are, are, are walking around and stocking the, 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 the uh, shelves, they've all got earbuds in. One guy's talking on the phone. He's got an earbud with one of those things that hangs down. And he's talking to somebody. This is freaky. I mean, he's talking to he's talking, walking down the hall, uh, walking down the aisle, and talking to nobody. And that's the way it looks, unless you notice that he's got the earbuds in. This is freaky. Sounds like a Kurt Vonnegut story. Or something. <laughs> like society is closed off on to. Things change. Things are, have changed so much. I'm a psychologist. When I see somebody talking to themselves, I think, oh, that guy's schizophrenic. <laughs> it really is. I mean, you, people don't just talk to nobody. Yes, they do. If they do, they're schizophrenic. That's, that's kind of a problem. Anyway, I things... talk to myself, but I don't hear voices. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know that? <laughs> All I see is you talking to yourself. <laughs> I think I'm not talking to myself right now. Okay. <laughs> anyway, okay. So things are changing. Things are changing here on the reservation. Um, up north, and this is, kind of, this is Montana. Let me pick on Montana for a minute. Uh, Montana was so sparsely populated, and the, most of the popu population were natives, uh, that AT&T never went up there. And even to this day, 
AT&T is not in Montana. So if you own a, you can't own a, a, an iPhone in Montana because they only work with AT&T. That's the way it works, okay. My sister has an iPhone, but she shows Verizon. Verizon's not AT&T. Yeah, she's Verizon. She has an iPhone, she, where does she live? She lives, um, I don't know where SKC is. Oh, that's uh, Pablo. Yeah, Pablo. Yeah. Pablo. Pablo. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. My sisters, they own iPhones. Um, I think they're like with Straight Talk or something. They probably get their signal from Spokane. That's pretty close to Spokane. It's right across. Yeah. It's not that far away. That's or Idaho. Some weird cell phone companies up there, like Bell. Bell Company. AT&T never ran any telephone lines in, in Montana. So long distance was really expensive up there. Uh, back in the 70s, there was one telephone on the Fort Belknap Reservation, for example. <clears throat> yeah, it was, uh, it was at the store. <laughs> Bruce, <laughs> when did you learn how to text? I still don't know how to text. <laughs> I don't, so don't text me, okay? <laughs> I don't even know how to read a text. Because you have to, well, you have to hit something. You have to swipe or do something, don't you? In order to, no? You guys text all the time. It doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> when my mom texts, she'll text me like every day. She'll be like, what are you doing? Where are you at, mom? You know, so like all her texts, she signs with, Mom. Mom. Yeah, like she's writing me a letter or something. <laughs> of course, she is writing you a letter. It's a really short one, but it's still a letter. The point is that life is changing. The world is changing. It's changing really, really fast, mainly because of technology. Uh, we're going to have embedded things in. I'm not, of course. I don't even, I can't even remember my cell phone. But my wife may do a, some kind of surgery where she implants one in my forearm, so it's always there. Yeah. I know. That way I won't have to work. For real? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> as weird as that is. So the world is changing, and the real, reality is that it's changed from the 50s to the 60s to the 70s to the 80s to the 90s into the 21st century. So you guys are the ones that are going to have to uh, understand all of this stuff. If we go back to the 50s to look at, to try to figure out why people do things, well, the world has changed since the 50s. It's changed since the 60s. Politics have changed. Everything has changed. The way we communicate has changed. Once upon a time, if you wanted to know what was going on in the world, you watched the news. Well, now the, the news is a 24-hour cycle. It, it used to be a... Uh, we, we saw it at 6 o'clock in the morning, we saw it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we saw it at 10 o'clock at night. But now, you can go to CNN and, and it's on all the time. You can go to Fox News and it's on all the time. And right now, we've got two conflicting ideas that uh, are trying to tell us what, what's going on in the world. And for that reason, We've got people that don't like each other just because one watches Fox and the other guy watches NBC or CBS or CNN or whatever. I know, it's weird. After the last election, I, those of you who have been in my class already know this, but after the last election, there's a lot of people that will not communicate with me anymore. Because I don't watch Fox News. I know. They read Bre Bre uh, Patriot News and they read... Breitbart, and they read all of this stuff, all this attack stuff. Well, it's kind of hard to attack since they're in charge. <laughs> so they won't communicate at all. They think, like, everything that Trump is doing is okay, too. And, like, some right. of the mistakes he's making, they always have an excuse for him. They're not, excuse, they're not mistakes as far as they're concerned. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. of the news. Yeah. Because the news tells them that it's not a mistake. So he hasn't lost his base. He still has 89% approval rate from, from those guys. And everybody else is going, oh my God, this man's an idiot. He just called African countries shit old countries. <laughs> Who does that? 
Presidents don't talk about shitholes, okay? Most of This one. This one. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. These people won't communicate with me anymore. And I have to go home on the 1st of February. I know. There's a guy that promised that if he found out that I was coming back home to Indiana, he's going to shoot me with his deer rifle. What? Yeah. Because I'm a liberal. No, I'm a libtard. <laughs> Uh, he's right. I'm a libtard. My brother calls me a libtard. Just one. I, don't, I have three brothers. I only have one that calls me that. He's conservative. He's almost a Nazi. He's terrible. Anyway, okay, so things are going to change, and things are going to change in the future. Uh, my wife is thinking of running for public office. I know, it's kind of exciting. Um, the reason she's going to do it is because she's a female. She feels like uh, the men are really screwing things up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And looking at the president, I, I'm not going <laughs> to argue with that point. Uh, she thinks that uh, men are really a mess. And she thinks unless we get uh, strong women in there to tell men to stop grabbing them by the body parts, uh, that uh, they're going to keep, keep doing it and thinking, thinking that it's okay. Uh, you notice all the people that are losing their political position because of things that they did 10, 20, 30 years ago that they shouldn't have done. Generation, you know, it's something they've learned in generation after generation after generation. It's like a secret. Right. Secret kind of thing that they've learned, and how can you change it? You know. And of course, the women weren't saying stop. I guess that was a problem as well. The women didn't react to it, or didn't react negatively to it. Al Franken. I mean, the things that he did, he did what? Twenty years ago, fifteen years ago. Uh, you know, and he just resigned because of what he did. So I, I don't know, and that's why my wife is may be going into politics. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. She's a retired Air Force colonel. So. And people in Iowa really like military people. So we'll see what happens. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What are we talking about? Okay. Uh, let me make sure that I don't go over. Uh, we're not going to start. I'm not going to start this right now because this has to do with uh, the first social psychologists. The first social psychologists were in Germany. Um, most of social psychology does come out of Europe uh, and the United States. And what we were trying to figure out was how can we predict what, how people will react to things. Americans wanted to do it because they were trying to make more money. We're Americans. Americans worry about money. Uh, and this is something that we're going to, that we're seeing in this administration. As long as it has to do with money, uh, EPA, forget about the EPA. The, if we have to send all the, the Navajos down into the uranium mines, get, do we give them masks to wear? Who the hell cares as long as we make money? You think I'm kidding? Wait until they want to open up the, the uranium mines. Of course, the tribe is saying no. We don't want to open those mines again. There's, we have too many, we've lost too many people to uranium and, and uh, the radiation and whatnot. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, this administrate what uh, they were going to. They want to drill off the uh, the Atlantic coast. There's oil down there, and they can make money. And as long as it makes money, it's okay. They don't care if they kill all the fish. They don't care if they contaminate all the beaches. It doesn't make any difference as long as it saves money or or whatever. Anyway.